Okay, the purpose of this lecture is to cover the concept of life cycle costing analysis, or LCCA. So our agenda here is to calculate the life cycle cost of a product based on the initial investment, the operation and maintenance cost, the rep replacement cost, the salvage value, and the discount rate. So life cycle cost analysis is the process of economic analysis to assess the total cost of ownership of a product, including its cost of production, installation, any operation and maintenance required, conversion, and or the decommissioning and disposal of the product. So really think about the costs along the different phases of the life cycle of that product. Very similar to what we looked at with the life cycle assessment approach where we're looking at product design, packaging, design, materials, extraction, manufacturing, distribution, use, service, end of life. And we're just putting numbers and cost values onto each of those different phases. However, since the use phase for some products can extend for several years, you know, 20, 30 years, in some cases, we need to use discount rate in order to account for things like inflation and the, um, the alternative costs associated with our investment. But this tool, LCCA, this is an economic tool that can be used to make business decisions. And the initial monetary investment is balanced with the long-term expenses and profits of owning, operating, and maintaining the system or the product. So this tool allows us to have inputs into the decision-making process for product design, development, and use. Um, it helps us evaluate and compare alternative products and their life cycle cost. It helps us to assess the economic viability of a product or a project. And it allows us to optimize the design by looking at different alternatives and performing trade-off studies, you know, like what would happen if we substituted this with this and how would that affect the cost over the life cycle of the product. Um, it also allows us to evaluate various operation and maintenance cost strategies. And it's kind of based on this concept that sort of the iceberg analogy where the purchase price is really just the tip of the iceberg. We have operation costs, we have service and maintenance, we have environmental impact costs associated with that, costs associated with decommissioning. And to, to do a real life cycle costing analysis, we really should be including all of those different cost categories. The common cost categories used in LCCA include the initial investment, capital expenditure, as it's referred to sometimes, um, the operating costs, the maintenance costs, capital maintenance, which refers to you know, large maintenance tasks that need to be performed in order to bring the product back up into working condition, um, the replacement cost, and the salvage value at the end of life. A lot of times we have cost conflicts in companies. So within a company or within an organization, we might have various stakeholders and each of these stakeholders might have different cost priorities that they're trying to minimize. For example, the project engineering team is trying to minimize capital costs. The maintenance team is trying to minimize repair hours. The production team is trying to maximize operation hours. Quality engineering team is worried about nullifying failures. The accounting team is looking to maximize the net present value and shareholders are looking to increase the stockholder wealth. So if we're doing a cost assessment, we really need to um, consider all of these different priorities and, and really balance this uh, in order to have a successful product. So let's talk about net present value or NPV. So net present value analysis accounts for the time value of money. If we have a future cash flow, like some cost that's going to be incurred in the future or some income that's going to be gained in the future, we have to discount that to a base date, which is often the present date, the present value, in order to enable better decision making. And we use the discount rate R, which is the rate by which future money becomes less valuable. So this refers to the investment's opportunity cost or the rate of return that an investor could earn in the market on investments of a similar size and risk. And it also accounts for inflation. So for example, we might have a discount rate of 5% to account for those two uh, items there. And the equation that we use for net present value is shown here on the bottom right. So it's equal to the initial investment plus our cash flow 
um, during time period one, might be year one or week one or month one, whatever time period we're using. And we divide that by one plus the discount rate. To that, we're adding the cash flow for year two divided by one plus R squared for being the second time period. And then we'll go to plus C3 divided by one plus R to the third, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to the final time period. So let's do an example problem. Suppose your company is considering installing a 20 megawatt solar power plant and you've determined that the overall capital cost of constructing that plant is $100 million and the plant will cost $250,000 per year to operate. If the annual maintenance costs are estimated to be 100,000 and let's suppose that we have to replace um, dozens of large inverters every 10 years and that's gonna cost $400,000 and all other system components need to be replaced after 15 years at a cost of $10 million. Um, at the end of the life of this plant, we can say that the salvage value of the facility would be 25 million. So how much annual income is needed to make the plant profitable? And let's assume a discount rate of 5%. When you do this example, I want you to go through a total life span of um, 30 years. So use the life cycle costing template, which is an Excel file that was placed on Canvas. And to use this template, change only the values in the yellow cells and make, sh make sure that when you're adjusting, let's say the initial investment cost, that you make that a negative value so that it, it treats it as a cost, not an income. Uh, same thing when you, when you look at the cost of replacement, the annual maintenance costs, Etc. Make sure those are negative values. Uh, when you put in that, when you input the salvage value and the annual income, you want to make sure those are positive values so that it treats it as an income. All right. And just as a hint, in order to find the annual income that's needed to break even, um, you want to adjust the annual income value each year until you find that net present value is equal to approximately zero. And that would be the income that you need to make each year in order to make this plant profitable over a period of 30 years. And ideally, you would want to have more income than that so that there is you know, some profit, that you don't just break even, but you actually make a profit. All right, so why don't you pause the video at this point, download the Excel template file, and try to find the solution. When you come back and unpause the video, I'll go through the solution All right, so here's a solution to the example problem. If you input all the values as shown below into the spreadsheet, you'll find that an annual income of approximately 6.8 million would be required in order to make the net present value approximately equal to zero. And if we divide that value by the number of kilowatt hours produced by the plant in one year, we can break down that income into a cost per kilowatt hour that needs to be profited in order to break even. Um, or need, that needs to be uh, charged in order to break even. So um, because we are accounting for our operation and maintenance costs and therefore the annual income cost can be broken down to a cost per kilowatt hour. Therefore, the conclusion from this example is that in order to make a profit on this investment, the rate that would have to be charged for the electricity would need to be at least four cents per kilowatt hour and ideally higher in order to actually make a profit. And as you can see here, the net present value works out to be uh, $40 when you um, use an annual income of six, about $6.8 million. And uh, of course that's close to zero. So it's basically breaking even. You'll want the annual income to be even a little bit higher in order to make a true profit. And that's assuming a discount rate of 5% and all of the other um, maintenance and operation salvage values that are shown here. If you click on this link, you'll find the um, spreadsheet showing the solution. I've also included this link in the Canvas page so that you can check your answers and see how the solution was, was um, provided in Excel.